here we are. Let me share my screen. And ta-da. Hey, everybody. Hopefully that's working for everyone. Let me just double check. Welcome to the CLI and you, an introduction to command line interfaces in cold fusion. Uh, my name is Mark Takata, I'm the technical evangelist for Adobe cold fusion. And today we're just going to be delving a little bit into the CLI and some of the things you can do with it uh, as, as it relates to cold fusion, obviously. Um, so for those of you who want to maybe try and follow along, I did want to let you know, um, hopefully you have Cold Fusion already installed, but if not, um, let me just give you a quick little way to get that installed, because I'm going to be talking a little bit about the history of CLI and some background into what it is and, and uh, its, uh, its current iterations, and during that time you might be able to actually download and install Cold Fusion. So, uh, the best way, if you don't have that installed right now, is if you go to adobe.com. Um, it's usually best if you're logged in with your adobe.com <clears throat> login. And then just go ahead and hit the search and type in Cold Fusion, all one word. Right at the top, you'll get this box right here. You'll get a Try Now button. Well, that button um, that that button didn't do what I wanted it to do. <laughs> uh, can everybody hear me? Uh, can everybody hear me now again? Okay, sorry about that. Wow, yeah, that was a really powerful button. All right, let's try that again. All right, so. <laughs> Last time on Mark tries to do a webinar, we got to the 30-day free trial of Adobe Cold Fusion, and we hit a button, and it totally killed Connect. Um, so, anyhow, go ahead and fill this out with the information that you uh, that you have about yourself, and then very important at the very bottom, there's actually a drop down here that probably until mm, last year nobody really. Uh, a, a lot of you really didn't care about because normally you would just pick the language that you were in or the um, <clears throat> or the, the the type, like whether it was Linux or whatever. Um, but now it's actually important that you kind of pay attention here. And um, for the beginning part of this CLI demo, go ahead and grab the 1.18 gigabyte, which is the full install, and then you can go ahead and start installing that if you want to just kind of. Uh, um, uh, just follow along. So anyhow, let me, um, but before I get into that, so go ahead and, and, and start doing that. Let's talk a little bit about the CLI, because uh, if you're a programmer of a certain age as, as I am, you might remember back in the day, uh, we all used to kind of use command line interfaces uh, just for our normal work. When I started, uh, well, actually, when I started, it was it was on Apple Basic, but later on, uh, I got an IBM machine and I got MS DOS. And now, of course, MS DOS 
it's an operating system, right? Um, but the way that you interacted with it, the way that you got things done in it was using a CLI, just like you're seeing here. Uh, this is a screenshot from 1980, holy moly. Uh, and the little A at the bottom is the, is the, the little A with the carrot is actually a prompt for the command line. And that's what you would use. So, um, for a long time, that was really how we all interacted with our machines. We didn't have graphical user interfaces or GUIs. Um, you know, even when Linux came along, a lot of people started using that, even though uh, Windows and Mac already had GUIs. Linux, when I started at least, uh, we really didn't use uh, any of the, the graphical uh, interfaces. We were all using CLIs. And eventually, uh, X11, you know, X Windows came along, and that became a little bit more of the norm with us dropping down to the CLI when when we needed to. Um, <clears throat> so, um, and of course, really fun. Uh, and, and I mentioned this actually for a reason. So also back in those days, if we were game players, if we were video game players, we also, uh, we also use the command line interface for the best game ever made, Zork. I think everyone will agree with that. Uh, and, and of course, there were many, many others. Like, games uh, at that time did have some graphics games, obviously, right? But they were fairly simplistic. But these games like Zork, Dungeon, you know, Rogue, uh, Colossal Cave Adventure, right? These are all famous sort of legendary games, and they were all uh, very simplistic in terms of their interface. They were all you know, CLI based, right? Um, and it was it's been interesting for me to watch as games have moved on because for a long time, uh, our basic way of engaging with computers very much turned towards graphical user interfaces and games also went that way. Um, and now as CLIs kind of become a more normalized way of interacting with uh, computers, we're actually seeing a little bit of a resurgence of the command line game. Um, there's a really famous one called Dwarf Fortress, uh, which is the, the work of one guy. And it's an amazing, if you've never heard of it, uh, check it out later. It's, it's an amazing game, highly complex, but it all uses um, basically CLI. It's not, it's not a graphics engine or anything like that. Um, so speaking of modern takes, a, a lot of programmers, if you just started coding or if you've, you've picked up some of the new, um, more recent frameworks and languages, it, you'll be pretty comfortable with the CLI, right? Um, you've got Bash, right? Uh, you've got PowerShell. Um, you've got, of course, you know, NuGet can be, can be run off the, the command line. Um, and of course, you know, command, the Windows command, uh, we can always drop down into that. Mac terminal, a lot of people use command lines today to do things like start a new project, to, um, to do a web pack on their project and push it up. Um, for Git, very, very, very uh, important. I mean, we all know there's obviously graphical user interfaces for Git, uh, a lot of really good ones actually out there. But for the most part, when things really, really need to get done, um, we drop down to the, to the command line, right? Command line git, we bash git. Um, and, <clears throat> and that's kind of how we, how we do that. Um, so I'm going to kind of drop into here and, and drop into the CF, um, CLI here. Um, and I'm going to actually use, uh, PowerShell, uh, cause that's sort of my, <laughs> that's sort of my jam. Um, and so here we are, this is PowerShell, we're, we're going. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go into my install. Um, <clears throat> and if, as you know, it, in PowerShell to actually make a command go, um, we're, you need the dot backslash, right? So here we are. Hey, look at that. We are in the CLI. Not a lot of, I don't know, Windows terminal. Sorry, John. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, Alejandro, um, 
uh, reach out to Aishwara if you can't hear anything. There might be something going on. I think everyone else can hear me okay, so there might be something going on with your speakers, maybe. Um, and I, I do actually use the the Windows um, <laughs> the Windows command line occasionally myself as as, as well. Um, so here we are. We're in this the CFCLI running under PowerShell, and not a lot has really happened right now. Um, and so you're kind of going, well, what the heck is going on? By the way, this is a very uh, it, people who came here looking for like a really advanced de deep dive into the CLI. Um, I will probably do one of those later on down the road, but for now I'm just kind of going to go a little bit simpler. So um, I'm just going to say, update, hello world, and do that. And so you're like, okay, well, what's that going to do? And it just writes hello world. So this is actually right now I'm running in a, a place where I can, I can hand it commands. I can hand off commands to cold fusion, as you can say, you know, write output is a, is a CFML construct. So, okay, well, what about if I just set a variable? So let's say, uh, you know, value of three is equal to three. So as you see, it actually echoes back. So this is an interesting thing with the CLI here is it actually echoes back. Yes, and this is CF REPL. <laughs> um, and uh, it actually echoes back the, the value that you put in there, um, which is just the, the, the way that it works. But now if I go and I say, right, output value of three, it will actually write that, that output out. Okay, well, that's pretty neat. Pretty nice, not thrilling, but nice, <laughs> right? So what about, what if we then uh, write it, what if we wrote a function? Okay, well, let's write a function and let's call it add three things. And it's gonna take in three arguments, arc one, arg2, arg3, and now this is something that you'll notice that you'll go, hey, wait a minute, you just hit enter, and it didn't try to execute that. So this is uh, actually a feature of the CLI. When you write something into the CLI that it recognizes as having the potential for multi-line. So when you're writing a function, for example, when you've got that open, <clears throat> um, that open bracket that you saw, uh, that, that I put in there. When you do that, it's actually smart enough to realize, hey, you're not trying to execute something because if I tried to execute that, it would error. Um, you're actually writing something that's going to have multiple lines. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and say, okay, um, you know, values added is equal to arg1 plus arg2 plus arg3. And I'm going to write output values added. And let's just make sure that I didn't make a stupid mistake because I do that a lot. Arc one, arc two, three, arc one plus arc two plus arc three and write output that. All right, let's go ahead and do that. And it didn't do anything. That's actually good. It didn't crash or it didn't say I did something dumb. So um, let's test that out. We'll say add three things and we'll do one, two, three. And all you math majors out there, what's that gonna come out to? Six, all right. Hey, that actually worked. So what did I just do there? So what I did was I actually added a function into the CLI and now I can use this function to add any three things. Um, and this is obviously people are you guys are realizing this is a, a very powerful thing. This is kind of in some ways like, um, you know, like a poor man's uh, version of TriCF or, or CF Fiddle, but also you can write these functions. And as you'll see in a little bit, you're, you're actually going to be able to uh, pull functions in from files too. And suddenly this becomes a, a lot more powerful. Like you're actually able to interact with the cold fusion server from the CLI, which opens it up to things like scripting, uh, to cron jobs, things like that. So I made a function, but what's, or is, is there a limit to that? Like, could I write another function that calls that function? Well, sure I can. So let's go ahead and write 
a function called pass three things. And I'm going to use the same argument names, mark three, because they're scoped properly. And I will just say add three things, arg one, oopsie, my keyboard keeps moving, arg two, arg three, and I'm going to do that. Okay, check my work, pass three things, arg one, arg two, arg three, and three things, arg one, arg two, arg three. Okay, that looks like it probably works. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So pass three things, and this time we'll go two, three, four, and math majors, what's that gonna equal? Nine. All right, so that actually worked. Um, hey. That's exciting, right? <laughs> so you can you can write things in here. It's a really uh, it's kind of a, a neat place to try things out. You can try different functions out. Um, you can test different functions out. There are some limitations to the CLI, by the way, um, and there's a whole page with information on you know what the limits are and and, and what it can do. I'll talk a little bit uh, more about that in a bit. Um, but I mentioned earlier that you can actually hit uh, a, a file. Right, so that's kind of exciting. So how do we how do we do that? Um, so basically, all we really have to do is we just have to t type the file name um, that we want to do. So I, I've I've made a few of them. Um, I'm going to start out with test zero .cfm, and what this is going to do, it's actually just going to uh, echo back a, a hello world a couple times, and I'll show you what that file looks like inside. So just typed it in. And what the server did is it went out to that file and it executed it. So let's take a look at what's inside that file. So here's test0.cfm. And all it is, just a CF script block. And um, I, I'm, what I'm showing you here is that write output um, will output to the screen. But also, there's a special write line, so a CLI.write line. Um, that can also be used to output to the screen. And there are some differences between those two things. So, um, for, for example, in the earlier example where I had the two functions, if I used CLI write line in the first function, um, it would not have actually written it, um, it would not have written it out in the second one. Um, you actually have to, uh, or sorry, if you did a return in the first one, it wouldn't return in the second one. Sorry, I'm, I just mixed that up. But um, anyway, um, so write line is is specific to CLI, and there's a few different um, there's a few different ones of those uh, that you can actually use. And let me just kind of. Um, so, um, and I'm going to go over some of these uh, in a bit as well, um, but it, there's also a page uh, that, that talks about all of these. So, um, anyway, I'm going to move on. So, um, the next one that I'm going to do is, is actually passing um, an argument to, to a file. So, if I go over to here, so let's go ahead and try to pass to test1.cfm. And just a warning, that's going to crash because it's actually expecting me to pass it a, a value. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to say test1.cfm, and I'm just going to pass it 1 as, as an argument. So the arguments are passed um, space delimited and uh, after the, the, the file name. So there you go. Um, so it's going to show you the number of them, the array, the array number, and then the position, and then uh, it's actually looking for the first argument. So what, what does that code look like? Okay, so I'm using another one of the CLI dot uh, functions, CLI get args, which actually goes out and it pulls back an array of all of the arguments that have been passed to it. So if I were to say, do that, you would see the array comes back, and in position one we have one, position two we have three, position three we have three, and then the first argument is being pulled in using CLI 
get arg at position one in the array. Um, and of course, since it's called fusion, arrays start at one, right folks? That's how we do this. Okay, well that's pretty, that's pretty cool and that's pretty useful. Um, what else can we do? What else can we, um, what else can we actually pass to this? Right, so let's actually try to do something called a named argument. Uh, oopsie, sorry, boop. So if I were to put in test, I believe it's two dot CFM, and I, let's let's call it one is equal to one. Okay. So what did that what did that send back? So now this is actually looking for named arguments, and instead of returning a an array, it's actually returning a struct because of course it is, and it's it's pulling back one, the named argument one, and then the value next to it one. Now you'll notice there's something for two here, uh, two argument, and it's blank. And why is that? Well, because there was not anything at position two. So if I were to do that and say two is equal to two, well, hey, there you go. Now it's actually pulling that back. So let's take a look at that code. And it's very similar to what we were doing before. So first we get, we get named args, which is basically all of the named arguments that were passed in. And we throw a label in it. And then um, here we're actually looking for the, uh, the named argument of two uh, and and putting in the the label in front of it. So, <clears throat> um, pretty simple, not a lot to it. Um, so let's talk about scopes for a second because you know these are all kind of the, the what we're what we're doing here is we're talking about the argument scope, which obviously this supports. But what other scopes are actually supported? Well. Um, there's a few. So this, uh, so CLI will actually support application scope, argument scope, obviously, because we're using it, um, the request scope, and this scope. So just to show you that the request scope works, I'm going to go ahead and run that. Okay. And what does that actually look like in terms of the code? So in here, um, Basically, what am I doing? Uh, oh, right, right. <laughs> of course. Sorry. My brain ticked off for a second. So first I'm setting um, two request variables, and then I'm just right dumping out uh, the request scope to the screen. That's what you were... That's what you were seeing there. Um, now you'll notice there's actually a couple of interesting things here at the end. CF dump init initted, I don't know how to pronounce that properly, uh, and CF dump initted for func. If you were to set these uh, to true, then the dump would actually not function. That's something that's kind of uh, in, in the re request scope in here all the time. Um, and you don't really have to worry too much about it unless you're dumping it to the screen like that and you were wondering what the heck it was. <laughs> um, now, here's something, uh, here's something interesting that you might run into is if you write a function, if you declare a function inside of the CLI, you cannot declare it again. Um, so, for example, if I were to, let me make sure that I actually, yeah. So, in, you'll notice inside of here, I actually, I actually wrote a function inside of here versus in these other places where I was just, you know, executing code. Um, so, I wrote a function and then I, I executed the function. Now, if I were to go here and say, do that again, it's actually going to error out um, because you can't declare that routine twice. But what I can do is I can actually say, write request to screen. Oopsie. And it will actually execute that function that's been put into the CLI. So that's um, that, that's maybe a little bit of a gotcha that you have to keep keep apprised of and, and kind of keep in your head that it's it's 
kind of difficult to, to, to redo that. Um, now you can always uh, quit out of this and restart it and then you can go ahead and, and put stuff back in it too. That's, that's totally fine as well. Um, so th that's pretty much it for this part of the CLI. I'm gonna actually slip into, I sort of lied at the beginning. I said that this was uh, the CLI. There's actually two CLIs that I'm gonna be talking about in Cold Fusion, but that's pretty much it for this part of the CLI. Um, there's a lot more that it can do uh, <laughs> there's a lot of other features that supports things like mail, it supports things like web services, uh, data sources, you can hit data sources. Uh, it doesn't support things like charting, PDF, um, solar integration, things like that. Uh, some of those are not uh, actually c capable of, of being integrated here. However, it can hit some of the APIs that are attached to your administrator. So it is it is a pretty powerful function. And if we get enough feedback that people want to see some of those more advanced uh, things, then I will uh, go ahead and, and put together a more advanced talk. There's like a lot of stuff that, that you can talk about when you get into that. Um, all right, so the second one, uh, the second CLI type. So this is the package and module management CLI. Okay, so let me go ahead and quit out of here. Um, now, to, to use this one, there's actually, I'm going to kind of go back to something I said earlier when we were looking at um, when we were looking at downloading a trial version of, of Adobe Cold Fusion. So earlier I said, go ahead and download this 1.18 gigabyte one, and that's the full install. And when I say full install, um, what I mean by that is in 2021, we moved to a, a highly modularized version of Cold Fusion. Um, if you've used you know any of, of the other <clears throat> programming languages out there, you'll know pretty much all of them have some semblance of, of packages or modules, right? Things that you can include that allow you to do certain things and that you only include when you're having to use those things just to make things a little bit leaner and faster, uh, a little bit more maintainable. Um, and so, you know, like NPM stands for Node Package <laughs> Manager, right? Uh, NuGet stands for uh, someone at Microsoft was hungry, apparently, but that's their package manager. Um, and so what do we have at Cold Fusion? We actually have a package manager of our own. Um, and the easiest way to go ahead and play with that is to go back and do the download trial. And you can actually pick this little installer right here, this 147 megabyte installer, uh, which is super tiny. And the reason it's super tiny is basically because it doesn't include pretty much all the modules. Um, and I'll, I'll get into which modules it does include in a second, because we're going to have a little bit of fun uh, with painting Mark into a corner here in a second. Um, but you can go ahead and try to download this. Go ahead and make, make sure that you stop the other service so that you don't get in your way. But um, the way that you'll download this and install it is you'll, you'll download it, you'll unzip it once, and then you'll unzip it again into the place where you want Cold Fusion to be to be sitting. And in fact, my my install of Cold Fusion um, was one of those versions. It was actually that smaller version that I went in and, and I added and subtracted all of the different packages from. Um, and then what you'll do is you'll uh, in the command line you'll actually go to the place where you where you uh, unzipped it to C Fusion bin and then you'll execute cf install.bat and you'll follow the directions on, um, on the screen. Uh, make sure that you don't put a password in that you'll forget because you'll be locked out of your administrator. <laughs> so don't do that. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> I only did it like five times. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of jump into that package manager. Um, so let's go ahead and CD Cold Fusion, C Fusion, and we ours is very very creatively CF Cold Fusion Package Manager PM. Oopsie, hold on. Uh, go like that. CF PM that. Why did that not work? Oh. 
Uh, it helps if you're actually in the right folder, Mark. <laughs> CFPM dot All right. We're in the package manager once again. Not a whole lot to see here. I'm going to clear the screen. Now, what can you do with this? Um, well, you can do a lot of really fun things. <laughs> so um, the first thing I'm going to do, though, before I kind of jump into things, is I'm going to show you here that we've got Cold Fusion running, which is actually here. And I'm going to log into my administrator. Do, do, do. And so here is the package management GUI. I know we're not talking about GUIs, but um, what I'm going to show you is that you can actually do some of this stuff in the GUI as well. But for me, I actually prefer the CLI. It's much faster and a little bit more powerful. Um, but as you can see, it's listing these two items as the installed packages right now. So if I go in here and I type list, it's going to show me those two packages, the admin API and the administrator. Those are the two ones that are they're installed. OK, um, well, that's neat. But what about all the other packages? Well, if you type list all, all one word, whoa! Holy moly, okay, we have got a lot of them out here. So at the very top, we've got the two that I have installed and a lot more packages available. All right, well, before we get into maybe installing some of those and checking those things out, let's, let's, see, let's see if we can completely break the server. Uh, <laughs> so here's a fun thing, if you type uninstall all you'll get these fun little red marks now I can go back right now and I can say I can come to here and this is actually still all running and it's totally fine and why is that well that's because um, <laughs> does the search package connect to Elasticsearch I am not 100% sure Sure, but I believe it does solar AMR. But um, let me let me double check that. Um, so this is still running and working fine, right? Everything's great. We're happy. Well, that's because I haven't restarted the server. So let's go ahead and I'm going to restart the service uh, using my giant uh, Thor hammer from Orbit here. <sighs> Give that a second. I apologize for that. This machine's a little tiny bit old. Um, all right, so that's running again. And we go back in here and we refresh this. And oh, no, what happened? <laughs> well, see, when I said that it, in, that it has almost no packages installed when you download the very small one, the two that are actually required for having administrator are installed and what I did just now is well I blew that up so I removed the administrator modules and now I'm stuck what do I do um, and and this is where the CLI is actually kind of powerful because if you were using the GUI and somehow you managed to get the those two packages uninstalled of course it won't let you but if you managed to somehow you would not be able to get out you'd be painted in a corner um, so let's try and install those back in. So let's ah, administrate Tor. Administrate. Ah, spelling is not my strong suit today. There we go. Okay. So install administrator. And it's going through, it's being installed, it's being installed. That's all good, that's all great. Now, as you remember before, you actually have to restart the server. So let's restart this up. Do, do, do. Stopping it, starting it. You can do it, server. <laughs> 
And there it is, it's running. And then we go back and we refresh this and it's still broken. Why is that? Well, <laughs> this is something I have to maybe chat with the engineers about. Even though this is actually running, you'll notice there's actually, this is pointed to a particular file called admin non-installed.cfm. So even though it is installed and it is running, uh, it will still show you the error until you actually try to go back to the administrator as I just did. And as you can see, it is running and it's, uh, <laughs> it is all good. That one, that one sort of, uh, threw me for a loop the first time that I, I ran into that. And here we are. Okay. We've got the packages back in and we've got administrator running again. Super, super yay. All right. So here we are. Here's a bunch of different, uh, things. So we've got, you know, the Ajax, um, we've got the AWS dynamo DB. We have Lambda, which is, is coming everyone. I know, I know, You've all been waiting for it. I swear it's like almost ready to be out there. S3, S3 Legacy. We've got some messaging stuff from AWS. Axis. Ah, you might be wondering, well, what the heck is Axis? And by the way, I checked, this does not install Axis versus Allies tabletop board game on your server. I know, I was disappointed too when I found that out. Azure Blob, Azure Service Bus, Caching, Mongo, Chart. I mean, they're just all of these different things that are available. Now, you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, what is Axis? Uh, like, what is that actually, what, what does it do? Well, there's a cool command called info, and you can just put that in there, and it's actually gonna tell you exactly what that package does. So, in this particular case, the Axis package helps you create web services uh, using SOAP and WSDL. Um, now you'll also notice that it does have um, required jars in here. Now this is really only for your own kind of just information. You don't have to worry about installing these or uninstalling these. These dependencies, the system takes care of actually putting them in place and pulling them back out as needed. Um, <clears throat> right, right, Michael. Um, no, I know, I know, yeah, I, yeah, this would be useful to have s s somewhere out there. Uh, maybe I can get something like that going somewhere. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, now, also, by the way, you'll notice that earlier I had to, like, start and stop the server to, to make sure that the package actually, like, like, showed up. So that is not the case, actually, for all packages. Um, that particular set of packages, just because it has such a, a core um, functionality inside of the server. I mean, it's the administrator, right? So that really, really, really needs to be in there. Um, that one does require you to, uh, to, to do that. Actually, um, I had a question earlier. I'm going to see if I can get this from info. So someone was asking about Elasticsearch, whether the search module and no, it looks like the search module, I was right earlier that it's actually for solar co collections. So, um, I think someone was asking about Elasticsearch. So I would have to actually figure out which one of these would work if we even have one that does that. So, um, okay. Um, so done, done that I've, I've installed it. So let's, what about installing stuff? Like, like installing more than one, like maybe we could, maybe we want to install a few of these, right? Um, so there's an install command, of course. And you can either just install one or you can comma separate them out. So you can say, let's say I want zip, I want SQL server and oh, let's do access because that was, we had fun with that earlier. So you can just go ahead and do that. And the system goes in and installs them for you. And there you go. And now if I list what we have, I've got the admin API, the administrator, Axis, SQL Server, and Zip. So that's really cool. Um, now you also have a, a lot of other capabilities in here. Some of these are, are, are a bit more advanced. So you can actually, um, you can clone 
the entire repo somewhere locally um, using download repo. There's um, and by the way, there's a there's a help page in our docs um, for the Cold Fusion package manager. Just Google Cold Fusion CLI uh, or sorry, Cold Fusion uh, package manager, and you'll get that page. It's got all of this info in there as well. Um, if you're in here, uh, you can just type help and you have just got a whole, whole, whole lot of things um, that it, it talks to you about. Now, one of the things that it talks to you about is right here, this, this scan tool. So what's that? Well, one of the things you might be wondering is, okay, uh, that's all great, Mark. Like you, you can pick and choose the things you want, but I don't know. I've got you know, a couple hundred thousand lines of code. Um, I have hundreds of files. Maybe I don't really know all of the things that I need to run my app. And so, because of that, I just install all, and you know, I just go in here and say, install all. Let's see. That's not what I want. <laughs> install all, ha, no space. Um, and it's just like going in here and it's gonna download everything and it's gonna be 1.18 gigs uh, and you're just gonna go to town on that. So that's not necessary to do, even though I'm doing it right now because YOLO. Uh, <laughs> um, so there is a tool that allows you to scan your server and, <clears throat> and it allows you to take a look at what um, what capabilities you are currently using inside of your code. So I'm going to wait a second. I probably shouldn't have done that because now it's going to install every single one of these uh, packages uh, on my server. So sorry, little computer. I just, uh, I just warmed up the CPU a tiny bit. So let's wait for this to get all installed while I enjoy my coffee. Um, let's see if I missed any questions here. Oh, John asked, does the CLI require semicolons? No, I just do it, John. <laughs> I just do it because because I'm uh, I'm old school. No, it does not. It does not require semicolons. It'll work either way. Okay. Hopefully. Y'all done, maybe, good times. Yay, okay, <laughs> sorry about that everyone. I probably shouldn't have just done a massive install all onto my system, but hey, that's okay. So let's talk about the scan tool because this is actually a really cool tool. There's actually a tool in here that you can point at your code base and it will actually go through and look at your code and figure out intelligently which of the packages are required for the code that's in there and how does that work. So um, you just type scan, oh, you have to be in the window that the cursor's in, that helps. Um, and you're gonna put in the code base path. Okay, so for me, that's C, cold, oopsie, cold fusion, C, fusion, um, dub, 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 root, and then you need to put in a CF server URL that the server is running on. Now, I've actually been told by the engineers that there's been an update that removes this requirement for the CF server URL. Um, I, I'm running an older version here. I haven't done an update on this. Um, and so for me, I actually still do need to, um, I still do need to aim this at something. Um, so I am going to aim this at uh, a code base that I have from when I did a talk on Dev Week. Um, and so again, I'm aiming it at C Cold Fusion, C Fusion Dub Dub Root. So that's the um, that is the area, actually, hold on, you know what? I think I'm doing this backwards. Let's see, does that crash? Sorry, hold on. Yeah, that crashes, sorry. Um, <laughs> my bad. 
I put it in the wrong spot. I swear I do this all the time. <laughs> 10, 8, 10, 21. Okay. Okay, so, well, that was kind of not super exciting. I'm not sure if I did that right. Hold on. No, no, it does it the other way. Okay, so it found debugger um, when, I, when I go ahead and do that. And what's interesting is earlier it found more, so I'm kind of wondering if I screwed something up. Um, but let me go in and do something and see if it actually fixes it. So I have got this file here inside of the dev week folder called test PDF. And as you can see, it's actually commented out. So if I do this right, and do that. Now I have a feeling this is actually Yes, it worked. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Um, so it actually was able to scan and it was able to find that I was using the HTML to PDF. So let me let me show, show you that again. So this file is inside of the Dev Week 2021 folder. It's called test PDF and it's got this tag here. Now, let me let me show you again. Originally, it was commented out using a cold fusion comment. Oopsie. Oh, that's not what I wanted. And now if I go through in here, it only finds the debugger package that's required to be to be used. Because this is not actually active until I go and pull that back out and save it. Now it actually finds HTML to PDF. That's pretty cool. Um, but what's even cooler is now I could go in and instead of just saying scan, I can say scan and install. So now what's going to happen is it's going to go look at my code, find the dependencies, find the things that need to be installed and install them for me. Except I already have them installed, so it doesn't do it. <laughs> there you go, scanning and installation completed. Now I could just uninstall all and get myself in trouble again, but I won't do that. Um, hopefully that uh, that gives you guys enough info on on all that. So this is a really, really great, great um, uh, functionality in, in the CLI. I use this much more than I use the GUI for doing package management. This one just seems to make more sense to me. Um, John Farrar asked, do any of these packages depend on other packages? If so, does it automatically load the other packages like NPM? Um, so the answer to your question is uh, no. They, the first question, do any of these packages depend on the other packages? No, each package is for the most part, I'm going to back off my earlier no, say for the most part, they all work independently of each other. Um, if they do have a requirement, they download that requirement. So um, there is, there's really not a way to download something and also need to download another one and not be told that. So, so that does work. However, really big, however, really big, um, uh, a caveat here is while the modules here do download a lot of this functionality, there are things that do need to be added in some cases that aren't loaded by the modules. So a very specific example of that is MariaDB. Um, there is a MySQL module that you can download that adds MySQL as an option for, for a database type. However, that jar, the driver for MariaDB does have to be downloaded manually and dropped in the bin file and you need to, um, you need to bounce the server to get that running again. Um, I'm still sort of trying to have them not do that because it's, yeah, it's, 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 an, it's an annoying thing. I actually did that on my system so my MariaDB connection works. Um, it's not super, super hard. It's just a little bit of a pain in the rear end to have to go out and find that, find that jar, 
download the jar, install it, um, and then you have to you know make sure if there's an update to that jar, you have to go and get it. It's yeah, it's 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 a whole thing. I mean, not really super different from using it in other systems, although other systems are a little bit better at, about like being able to update it, um, things like that. So I'm at I'm at ten till. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the the quick command, and I'm going to exit out of here, and I am going to ask for any questions that people might have. So let's see. Oh, um, Rong says, can we do update as well? Um, Rongchi, do you mean uh, an update to the server? Is that what you mean by that question? No. So this, um, so from the uh, from that command line, um, you actually cannot do uh, an update. There is, I believe, um, I think there's another way to be able to to to, to update it, but it's not from there. So yeah, it, it would be nice if 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 that was. Um, can we update the modules from the CLI? Yes. Um, in fact, it will go out and update them um, automatically when you pull them down. So um, one of the things actually that, um, well, it's hard to show when, when I'm in sort of this state because, you know, I just spun this thing up and it's kind of updated and everything's good. And then actually I just updated my modules as well uh, through this, the GUI earlier, so I sort of screwed up. Um, but you know what? Uh, let me open that up. I'm going to open the PowerShell back up. Hold on. I'm opening this back up. All right. So let me go. Boo. Let me CD cold fusion. Uh, C fusion. Bin. And dot backslash CFPM dot bat. And list all. Okay. So. What you'll see here is that um, some of these are actually not updated. And what you can do, um, so John, you can load a former module if it hasn't been updated. Um, you, I don't know that you can go Oh yes. So sorry. Yes. So you can install um, you can install a package with a version name. If you actually know the version name, um, you can you can say install package name and then you include the version after it in square brackets. Uh, just kind of how it's how it's done here. Um, so let me do real quick um, since I have a few few more minutes here. I can say. Um, update oh you know what i'm sorry i i, I made a mistake earlier wrong chi you can update the server from here um now it's only i believe it only does the hot fix i don't know that it will install a um if there's like a major update um but it does allow you to to do the hot fix and it if you just do update all it will update the whole kit and caboodle to uh, the latest hotfix and all of the installed packages. So sorry, I missed that earlier. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, let me see if I can, I'm not actually sure if you can update, like if I just say update zip, yeah, it won't let me do that. So um, if I do update packages, well, that's interesting. Hmm. I need to look into that a little bit because they are actually, as you can see, um, there are some in here that are older, right? So like ORM is is, is older and uh, ORM search and PDF. So um, let me look into that a little bit, John, and 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 kind of figure that out. I'm I'm pretty sure you can uh, mess around with with doing like loading particular. Uh, versions of the packages if you want to. Of course, 
you know, they're often updated for a particular reason, and there might be some issues with some of the packages. Working with other packages, uh, if you use an older one and something's been changed that makes it in incompatible. Um, okay, uh, any other questions? People play Zork still? Yes, Mark. So, yeah. So, list all is, um, it's all available, um, but that includes what you have installed as well. If you just want uh, what you have installed, well, I have all of them installed <laughs> right now, since I did that crazy thing earlier where I did the install all. Um, and so, these two lists are actually the same. But if you just type list, it'll just do the ones that you have installed. You're very welcome, Gene. I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping folks uh, learn, learn a few things. The CLI is really awesome. Um, I love it. I use it all the time. It's really, really great. It's lots of fun. Makes me, uh, <laughs> makes me pine for the days of DOS as, you know, Windows is crashing on me left and right. <laughs> all right. Let me... Hi, you're welcome. Yeah, Mark, it, the scan feature is super cool. Um, it, it, it really is. It's super fun. And I'll try to get a little bit more info about, um, yeah, I was told by an engineer that you didn't need that last uh, that last setting, but it seems as though I still needed it here, so I'm wondering if it's a version. <laughs> Parallels. Yeah, John, let me, let me go on, you know, grab my Mac and fire this up and... Uh... <laughs> Right on. Ah, you're welcome, everyone. That was a good time. Now, if anybody has any questions, by the way, um, you can email me at takata at adobe.com. Um, I'm available there. I'm also on the CFML Slack channel as well. Um, I'm on the Facebook Cold Fusion Programmers group. Um, and yeah, uh, John from from Adobe. Is that what you're asking, John? Because um, from Adobe. Um, yeah, from Adobe, we we are we are not traveling this year, so we are not going um, we are not going to into the box. Uh, we're still we're we're still basically kind of shut down as far as as travel goes. Um, yeah, we're just sort of s still staying at home, so um, not not heading there. Uh, maybe next year, and also. Um, Oh, thank you. Yeah, it would have been fun. Um, and, and also, um, I'm not sure this has been announced necessarily anywhere, uh, but you can consider this a minor announcement that uh, this year's CF Summit will also be virtual. Probably everyone kind of expected that. Um, but this year, we are again. Um, do we have another seminar for CF 2021? Um, uh, yes, so there is another, um, I, I should actually be doing these uh, webinars once a month. Um, I've got another one in September, and that one is going to be on um, using, uh, basically propping Cold Fusion up in the cloud, kind of a, a starter's guide to getting yourself booted into uh, both Azure and AWS. Um, so that's going to kind of be for, you know, if you've never really played with the cloud all that much. Um, this is going to be a way that you can learn to just kind of go out there and try to use some of the um, either free or super low cost uh, features <laughs> and, uh, and and getting that in there. Uh, we also have other seminars as, as well. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Docker images. Yes, Docker images are available. Um, Doug, if you could um, if you could email me. Uh, Takata, T-A-K-A-T-A, -A -A, at adobe.com. I will send you the link there on 
um, AWS ACE, uh, ECR right now, or ECS, I think, one of those uh, places, uh, and they are available for download currently. They're going to be on Docker Hub, like, ah! I swear, any day now, super, super close. We're, we're, we have them all set up. It's paid for. Everything's signed. I don't know what we're fi we're waiting on some VP somewhere to sign it. Um, so what's Docker funny, John? Um, in CLI, does the process always to read the application CFC? Um, it does, but it doesn't read them all. So um, it does not actually. It it does not. Uh, so, hold on. It. Um, only on application start, on application stop, and on error is the things that it pays attention to. Um, there's no support for like on session start, on request start, or any of that in the CLI. It totally ignores those. Um, uh, ACF for Raspberry Pi. I haven't. You know what, John? I think somebody actually. I think somebody actually did do that. Um, oh, who I, I know, I know we've done it with, with, uh, I know people have done it with Lucy, uh, man, maybe Paul knows, I think Paul's, Paul's the, Paul, uh, Kukil, uh, likes to put CF on crazy things, um, so he might have actually done it, um, Drew, yeah, not, not on request star, now, to be clear, remember, it does support the request scope, but not, for example, on request start, on session start, and, and all those. So, um, yeah, John. So, so that's why I was um, that's why I was pointing out Paul because he um, he's he's kind of the whiz at making ACF do his evil bidding on ARM. He managed to put it up on some of the um, some of the AWS ARM infrastructure. He's got a whole cluster of them kind of running in a weird way. I'm, I'm supposed to get on a Twitch with him at some point in the future and kind of look over that and, and gaze and wonder at what he managed to do there. Um, so anyway, uh, thanks everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, I really appreciate everyone coming by and coming to check it out. Um, glad you guys enjoyed it and I'll be back uh, next month. Um, so please feel free to come by and check that out. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll enjoy that as well. Um, and look out for a, a bunch of other webinars that are being done by other folks as well. We've, we, we're, we're trying to get more of these out there and more, more folks um, kind of getting engaged at all different levels. Um, a lot of my stuff will probably be uh, introductory stuff uh, for a while. Uh, but, you know, if I get enough feedback that people want to see more advanced versions of my intro stuff, let me know and I will try and spin up something a little bit more advanced for uh, those folks that are interested. <laughs> Alrighty. All right, folks. Well, everyone have a wonderful day. Thanks again for coming and uh, make sure to come by next time as well. And this will be recorded and available for future use on um, the coldfusion.adobe site as well. Oh, well, good night in East Africa. <laughs> good evening to you. Thank you so much for coming from, uh, oh goodness, oh goodness. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not keeping you up too late. Oh, wonderful, well, welcome. Thank you so much for, for, for joining me from Kenya. Oh, 8 p.m. is not that bad, okay. That's not too bad. Alrighty. Got a couple people finishing up here. You're very welcome. All right, everyone.